In this video, we continue looking at reactions of groups surrounding the aromatic ring, specifically focusing on reactions at the benzylic position, where as a reminder, the benzylic position is that first position away from the aromatic ring. It's what I'm highlighting in this molecule of propyl benzene right here on our reactant side. In the last reaction, we looked at reduction reactions of carbonyl groups at the benzylic position to give alkyl groups. Now, instead of reduction reactions, we're instead going to look at oxidation reactions where we're increasing the number of bonds between carbon and oxygen, and hence decreasing the number of bonds between carbon and hydrogen as a consequence of that. So specifically, what we are going to look at is the oxidation of alkyl groups that are directly attached to the aromatic ring here, treating them with an oxidizing agent. And the product of that is going to correspond to breaking off all but the very first carbon of that group so that we end up with a carboxylic acid as the oxidized product here. And so general guidelines for what's going to happen in this reaction is that we are going to oxidize the benzylic position specifically that benzylic carbon to a COOH group. Remember COOH is our abbreviation for the carboxylic acid group that we see on the product side here that I just circled. The rest of these atoms, whether this chain is one additional carbon or 20 additional carbons or 200 additional carbons, this is not going to be in the major organic product. This is going to get cleaved off and so it will not generally be something that we will be considering or concerned about when we think about predicting the major organic products of these oxidation reactions. And much like with the last video we went through, where we were doing the wolf kishner and Clemenson reduction, we are not going to go through the mechanism for this reaction, but we should be able to apply this reaction toward some specific situations and use it for problem solving to carry out targeted syntheses of a specific organic molecule that we aim to create for some practical application. So in this reaction, one thing we haven't talked about yet is what would we use as our oxidizing agent? And if we think way back to oxidation reactions that we have learned about in the past, we previously talked about oxidizing alcohols, for example, the main oxidizing agents that we worked with were things like chromium-6 reagents, where chromium would be in the chromium-6 plus state at the beginning of the reaction. We also, in addition to reactants that contain chromium, of which there are a variety of possibilities, we also looked at potassium permanganate KMnO4 as a common oxidizing agent as well. And so that's what you'll wanna be on the lookout for here is if you see chromium in the reaction mixture, specifically if it's in the chromium six plus state or potassium permanganate, those are your most common two oxidizing agents that you will need to be on the lookout for here. And you're looking out for there being a benzylic carbon that will be converted into a carboxylic acid. There is one additional important consideration as we're sketching out here some of the generalities of this reaction. And that is that benzylic carbon cannot be a quaternary carbon. It has to be a carbon that has at least one hydrogen directly bonded. So primary, secondary, or tertiary will all work because there would be at least one carbon hydrogen bond. If there's no carbon hydrogen bond to break there, the oxidation cannot take place. So any carbon here will behave the same and being converted to a carboxylic acid group, except a quaternary carbon. A quaternary carbon is not going to be reactive in this oxidation reaction. It would remain unreacted. So let's take a look at some example problems that will highlight what we just looked at here. In these examples, we are going to try to predict the major organic product for each of the four reactions that we have here. As always, I encourage you to hit pause, try these on your own, and then hit play to get the solution sets. So looking at our first reactant here, toluene, reacted with potassium permanganate KMnO4, recognizing that we have an oxidizing agent treating a molecule that has a benzylic alkyl group here, a benzylic carbon of an alkyl group. We recognize that that is going to be oxidized 
to form a carboxylic acid. So COOH going on right there. So this is a way that we go about converting toluene, our starting material, into benzoic acid, our product. And as a fun little aside about benzoic acid, that is a common preservative. So if you look at a food packaging label and you see benzoic acid, you recognize it as a preservative. Also, it's commonly deprotonated. And when this proton is lost, it becomes called benzoate. So things like sodium benzoate, you will commonly see as preservatives as well. So in the next example here, we have this bicyclic system where we have an aromatic molecule directly attached to a five-membered ring. Problems that have rings, particularly problems that have multiple rings, always give people a bit of uh, anxiety or a bit of confusion at times. But handle this the same way that you would the problem up top here, and that is that every single benzylic carbon, except quaternary benzylic carbons, becomes a COOH group. So right here, this is going to become a COOH group. This right here is going to become a COH group, and the rest of the carbon atoms, specifically this one carbon right here, going to go away. So the product of this reaction is going to correspond to our aromatic ring being connected to a carboxylic acid group here and a carboxylic acid group here. So we're replacing both of those benzylic carbons, which I'm highlighting in pink here, with the carboxylic acid group that we see in the product. We can reduce, I mean oxidize at both of those positions because of the fact that both of them have CH groups at the benzylic position. On to the next question. So in the next question, we have a benzylic carbon right here that does have a CH group bonded there. It is not a quaternary carbon, it's a tertiary carbon, so there is a CH group there, and therefore it is subject to oxidation with our oxidizing agent, CrO3, which would have chromium in the six oxidation state. So therefore what we do here is just replace that benzylic position carbon with a COH group. We don't need to worry about the rest of this mess of alkyl group atoms here. The main organic product going to correspond to replacing that with our COH group. And then last but not least, we come down here to tert butyl benzene. We're treating with our reagent here being potassium dichromate. Cr207 is what we refer to as dichromate. And in this particular reaction here, what you have to pay attention to and not get completely on autopilot with is that here we have a quaternary carbon. There are no benzylic CH bonds. And so as a result, there can be no reaction. The oxidation reaction requires that there be a CH bond to oxidize. Since there are no CH bonds at that benzylic position, there will be no reaction here. Now let's take a look at how we can apply this reaction in the synthesis of specific targeted organic molecules. Let's say we want to synthesize benzoic acid starting from benzene. So we're asking how we can carry out the reaction that I am sketching out here. I'm going to put a question mark there to indicate we don't know what reagents we would need to use in order to accomplish this. So based on the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions that we learned, we learned no way to directly attach a carboxylic acid group onto an aromatic ring. And so, therefore, we have to consider and do some multi-step reaction to go from benzene to our final intended product. The logic strategy that we will use to take a look at how to go about doing this is that we'll look at this retrosynthetically. Retro meaning looking backwards. So I'm going to put my carboxylic acid out here at the far right side of the screen. And I'm gonna to try to step backwards one step at a time to sort out how we can go back in time from here to benzene. So we think about what do we know as a single reaction that we could use to convert something into benzoic acid? Well, based on the reactions that we just learned, we learned that we can take alkyl benzene, such as isopropyl benzene. We can treat it with an oxidizing agent such as CrO3, which we refer to as chromium trioxide, and that would result in converting the benzylic carbon here that has a CH group there 
into a carboxylic acid group. So we could do that. And now that we have done that, we have to step back a step further and go, okay, do we know of a way to make isopropyl benzene? Indeed we do, because we are masters of the friedel crafts alkylation. And in that friedel crafts alkylation reaction, what we did was we started with an aromatic molecule such as benzene. We reacted with an alkyl halide. So I'm reacting here with isopropyl chloride so that we are able to attach that isopropyl group, which I'm highlighting here in yellow, onto the aromatic ring. The catalyst of this reaction is aluminum trichloride, so I'll put an Al. CL3 there. So this would be one efficient route to go about accomplishing this, is that we could do a friedel crafts alkylation to attach the alkyl group, followed by an oxidation reaction to convert that isopropyl group, our alkyl group, into the desired carboxylic acid group. This is not the only way to go about accomplishing this. Another route that you could use to accomplish this would be thinking backwards in time again. You could say, okay, hmm, one way I know to go about converting a molecule into a carboxylic acid is to take alkyl benzene of some sort, so here ethyl benzene is one possibility, and doing an oxidation reaction. This time I'll do potassium permanganate just to mix things up. I could have also used the chromium reagent here instead. And then as I'm thinking further backwards in time, I might say to myself, well, I know because we learned about the Wolf-Kishner reduction reaction and the Clemenson reduction reaction that I can take a ketone substituent here and I can treat that with our Wolf-Kishner reagent or our Clemenson reagent and reduce that carbonyl group to our ethyl group here. And so you might be inclined to do that instead. So you might be inclined to do the Wolf-Kishner, which would be hydrazine H2NNH2 with potassium hydroxide, or you could do Clemenson, which would be our amalgam of zinc and mercury with HCl as another alternative to that. So either of those would work. But you're not quite back to the beginning yet. To get back to the beginning, benzene, we have to think about, do we know a way to go from benzene to our ketone product here? And indeed we do. That was our friedel crafts acylation. And in the friedel crafts acylation reaction, what we did was we took an acyl halide. I'll use a two carbon acyl halide here, carbonyl group and methyl group, just like we have in our product aluminum trichloride catalyst, AlCl3, and that would result in formation of our product that we desire here. So in this reaction, we did our friedel crafts acylation first to attach an acyl group. We then did Wolf-Kishner reduction to reduce that carbonyl group to an alkyl group, and then finally oxidized that alkyl group to give the carboxylic acid product of this. And so either of these two routes would work in order to get to the final product. And generally these synthesis problems are very much a choose your own adventure type journey where there will typically be more than one way to get to the intended final product. If you're trying to optimize this reaction, you would think about such things as from practical considerations, the availability of the reagents that you need to carry out the reaction. Are they commercially available? Are they in stock? Are they already in your lab perhaps? You could also think about things like the expected yield of each reaction and how many steps there are involved in going from starting material to final product because typically if you can lower the number of steps required to go from starting material to product, you are ultimately going to increase your speed at which you can ultimately generate your final product. And there's always some loss of product in going from one step to another with sample handling and everything else. And so by lowering the number of reactions that you need to carry out, you can often increase your yield as well through that. So for purposes of this class though, if I give you a target like benzoic acid and I say find a way to synthesize it, as long as your reactions make logical sense that they would give the intended desired major organic product, I am not concerned about you optimizing the exact path that you take. So in the case of this example, I would take either the answer up top here that I'm highlighting or as an alternative, the path below, 
would be acceptable as well. And there's a variety of other permutations of this, which would work as well. Chemical synthesis is really an exercise in creativity, and that creativity works best if you are familiar with the reactions that we're learning. The more familiar you are with the reactions we're learning, the better off you will be in terms of trying to stitch together from beginning to end how to carry out these reactions.